Okay. Today's daf Yomi is the Dharm daf Yud Gimel, the Dharm 13. And we're going to start on the bottom of Yud Beis and Mabez, six lines from the bottom. The Gemara has been discussing the concept of if a person says this piece of meat in front of me is like that piece of meat, and he points to a carbon shlomim after the blood was sprinkled. So therefore you can eat the meat of the shlomim after the blood is sprinkled. But our question is, is the person comparing it to the meat after the blood was sprinkled or the carbon shlomim before it was sprinkled, in which case it's prohibited. So the Gemara says, this was Remy bar question. Gemara says, let's say that this is actually the answer to this question is a dispute amongst the Tanayim, because as we're going to see in Nazir down on a base, if there's, if we say, if somebody says, if somebody says, this animal is upon me like a firstborn animal. So Rabbi Yaakov says it's Oser. Rabbi Yaakov says that you've prohibited the meat in front of you like a firstborn animal of the carbon, and therefore you, it's a carbon takes effect. Whereas Rabbi Huda says, Mati, Rabbi Huda says it's permitted. And the Gemara asks, hey, Chidami, what's the scenario? Why does Rabbi Yaakov say it's prohibited and Rabbi Huda say it's permitted? If you were saying that you're comparing it before the blood was sprinkled, and why does Rabbi Huda say it's permitted? My time of the man, the Shari, why does Rabbi Huda say it's permitted? And if it's after the, the blood was sprinkled, my time of the man, the Asr, why is Rabbi Yaakov saying it's prohibited. It's after the blood was sprinkled, it should be permitted. So it must be that the scenario is, Elav, must be that the scenario is, the Mochas Basar Bechor, Mochas Basar the Hayach Kabeh, that he has the meat of the firstborn animal on top of Yud Gimel and Aleph, and also the meat that he's taking oath upon. Both are in front of him, Amar Zekazet, and he says, this one is like this one. And one says, Rabbi Huda says we compare it to after the blood was sprinkled and therefore it's permitted. So Rabbi Yaakov says we go to Ikaro, we go to before the blood was sprinkled and therefore it's prohibited. Vitanahi. And so this, this, the answer to this question is Machokas Tanayim. Versus, no, we're not going to say that. Well, the Kuli Alma of Nezri Kastamim. Even Rabbi, even Rabbi Huda says it's permitted, says we're talking about when he compares it, we're talking about the firstborn animal. We're not. We're saying when it compares it to firstborn animal, it's talking about before the blood was sprinkled. Well, if that's the case, my time and demand the shari. So why does Rabbi Huda say it's permitted? He says it's permitted based upon the following argument: Amar Kra ki yidor. The verse says ki ish ki dor neder la Hashem. When a person will take a vow to God and and prohibit something upon himself. So the verse is telling us ad she yidor bedavar another. That when does a vow take effect? If you take a vow about something, what's called a davar another, a davar another, is something that when you when you take the vow upon yourself, it becomes prohibited. But if it was prohibited upon yourself before the vow, then then it's called a davar aser, and it was inherently prohibited. And then if you take a vow by comparing it to that, what's called hatfasa by associating with it, then the vow will not take effect. The vow only takes effect on on a davar another, not a davar aser. And so therefore. So, so it's the one who says it's permitted. And a bechor, a firstborn animal, from the from when it's in the womb, it's already considered a firstborn animal. It's going to be prohibited. So, if you take a vow through atzvas on something that's prohibited, then like a bechor, then we're going to say the vow does not take effect. And so, therefore, Behuda says it's permitted. So, the Gemara says, Uman. So according to, excuse me, and according to Rabbi Yaakov, who says it's prohibited if I compare it to firstborn animal, what does he do with this fact? Based upon the fact that the verse says, the Hashem, verse says, it says in the verse, Hashem, and what do we do from the fact that it says Hashem? The rabbos davar. So, so he says the rabbos davar aser. So he says since the verse says la Hashem, it's coming to include a davar aser. It's coming. The word Hashem is coming to tell us that even though the before is a, a davar aser, 
Nevertheless, we're going to say that the vow takes effect upon it. And if you compare it to the firstborn animal, the nether is going to take effect. The Mara says, Uman Shari whereas according to Rabbi Yehuda, La Hashem, my way, what does he do with the fact that it says La Hashem? It says, Hashem. He's telling us the word Hashem that's saying that it takes effect is, is basically going to, the reason why it takes effect uh, is because it's, it's comparing it to a chatos. The, the word of Hashem is, is to tell us that the vow will take effect on a sin offering or a guilt offering. But since even though those things are obligatory offerings, you yourself took the vow upon them. And so therefore the vow will take effect because you yourself designated those animals. So the Gemara says, well, so why are we saying that, why is Rabbi Huda saying that if you, if you compare it to Bechor, it's going to be permitted, but if you compare it to Achatos and Hashem, the vow will take effect. What's the reasoning? So the Gemara says, Rabbi Huda would say, because I'm going to uh, says I'm going to say that if you take the vow and compare it to the chadas and the ashem, he's not fispineder. Those things take association with the nether. It doesn't really explain it, but it must be because you can make those animals prohibited with your vow by by saying I take a vow that this sheep is a or this 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 animal is a chadas or an ashem. Whereas the Bechor, the firstborn animal, that was that was sanctified from the womb. Umanda Aser, whereas Rabbi Yaakov, who says it's prohibited, because he says the vow takes effect on a firstborn animal, he says, Bechor nami matfiso He says, that, uh, even though the Bechor is sanctified from the womb, nevertheless, you also make it holy. Why? The Tanya, Mishim Rabbi Amru, Minayel, and Noah, Bechor, we talk Beso, Shem Mitzvah, Laktisho. Even though there's a firstborn animal that was born in your home, you still have a mitzvah to consecrate it. So it's since you still have a mitzvah to consecrate it, it's called a davar nador and not a davar aser. As it states, as it states in the verse, kol b'chor shayiv halei b'chor kol ben sancha hazachar takdish Hashem okecha. Hazachar takdish, it's still a mitzvah for you to consecrate it. So the Gemara says, man shari. And according to Rabbi Yehuda, what about, what does he do with the fact that it says it's a mitzvah for you to consecrate the firstborn animal. So why, if you take a vow upon a firstborn animal by, by being by a hatfasa to a firstborn animal, does it really say it doesn't take effect? Because he says, if, even if you didn't consecrate it, it would have been consecrated on its own. And so therefore, that's what Rabbi Huda says. So therefore, the vow doesn't take effect. So the Gemara says, and we had said in our Mishnah, and if you take this piece of meat and you'd say, it's like a sheep or it's like a flock, then the vow is going to take effect because you're basically saying it's like a carbon. But Tana, but we learned, we learned in a Bryce, so the Bryce says, Imra, le Imra, ke Imra, that even if you don't use the word ke Imra, you just say Imra or le Imra without the Chaf Adimion, without saying it's like a Chaf. Or dirim, or emer is a sheep. Or dirim, or dirim, kadirim, and these are a, a corral that holds the animals. Or etzim, or etzim, kaetzim, or wood, or, you know, like the wood of the altar. Or ishim, or ishim, keishim, or like the fire of the altar. But you don't say the chafadimi on each time. Mizbech, 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 or hecho, hecho, kehecho, like the altar, or the sanctuary. Your shalim, your shalim, your shalim. So if you use all these phrases without necessarily using the chafadimion, then we say in all these cases, kuan, in all these cases, sha'ochocha, uh, so if he says the animal that I'm eating or this food that I have in front of me that I eat from you is like this sheep or is the sheep or for the sheep, then it's aser. And then the vow is going to take effect because it's like, because we're saying that you're saying that your food is like this person's carbon. But he says, but that which I don't eat from you is like the sheep. That means which I can eat from you is not like the sheep. Then butcher. Then you can eat from your friend's food. So then the vow doesn't take effect. So the Gemara says, man shamina lay to lo shani lay imra imra kimra. Who is the one that says that we don't draw a distinction 
So who is the author of this b'risa who says that we don't require you to say basically the chafa dimyon, that it's okay even without the chaf in front of it? Who is the author of this b'risa? Man, shamino, edo, shani, le, imra, le, imra, ke, imra. Rabbi Meir, he, the author of this b'risa must be Rabbi Meir because Rabbi Huda in our, in our mission says you need the chafa dimyon. And so there, who must be arguing? Usually it's Rabbi Meir who argues. So even though we don't see explicitly Rabbi Meir, the Gemara is suggesting it's Rabbi Meir. But Ema Seifa, but how can it be Rabbi Meir? Vakulan, the concluding clause says, Vakulan, by all these cases, if you say, Lo Ochocha Mutar, that if you say, let's say, for example, Imra, La Imra, Kimra, Lo Ochocha, I will not eat from you, like from your sheep, then that which I will not eat from you is from your sheep. It's permitted. But why is that the case? Vatanan, Likarban, so why, that, that if you say, if it's for a carbon, I will not eat from you, Rabbi Meir says, it's prohibited. And here we're saying, mm-hmm. that it will, they will not eat from you. It's permitted. So why, so how can we say that this price is Rabbi Meir? So the Amar Rabbi Abba, and Rabbi Abba explained that position of Rabbi Meir, Nasik Omar, it says that why does Rabbi, say, Rabbi Meir say it's prohibited if you say le carbon? Because we look at it as though we said, your food will be like a sacrifice to me. And therefore, I will not eat from you. And so therefore, so too, in this case, would say that your food is to me like a sheep, and therefore, I will not eat from you. And so therefore, it should be prohibited. So why in this price, if we're saying it's Rabbi Meir, is it permitted? So the Gemara says, you know, we can still say the price is Rabbi Meir. If he says, one is where he says, for a sheep, and when he says, well, it is not for a sheep. So if he says, it is, so if he says, if he says, loa imra, it will not be a sheep. And therefore, I will not eat from you. It's mutter because he's saying, this is not a sheep, it's fluent. But that which I will not eat from you uh, um, will basically, uh, that which I will not eat from you will, this will not be for a sheep, it will be for chulun. And so therefore, I am not, that which I will not eat from you is going to be chulun. But if he says, but in the other source, our mission, where he says that it is going to be, if he says, if I don't eat it from you, it is permitted, that's where he's saying this, that's where he's saying, imra. it is for a sheep, and therefore it's prohibited. And so when he says this will be for sheep, and uh, even though he says, lo ochocha, if he says, this is, will be for a sheep, therefore I will not eat from you, therefore go and say it's prohibited. So in the Mishnah where it says, look, Karban, there are mayor saying, it will be for a sheep, therefore I won't eat from you, therefore the mayor is saying it's prohibited. But in our Brahisa here, he's saying, it will not be for a sheep. And therefore, when he says, this will not be for a sheep, it will be for Hulan, therefore I will not, th- that which will not be for a sheep, that which will not be for a sheep, I will not eat from you, Meaning for say, I can't eat from you in general. And so therefore, uh, and so that and therefore a mayor says under those circumstances permitted. So now we're up to the bottom Mishnah on uh, Yud and Alf. A person says the Omer Karban Oa Mincha Khatas Todo Shlomim. So the person says, it looks at the meat in front of him and he says, This is this is, you know, my meat is to this, like a carbon oa khatas shlamim, shani ochocha, that which I eat from you. Is like oh amen chachatas todos shalom. These are all sacrifices which can be obligatory. Aser. So then the vow takes effect, and the person's food is going to be prohibited. Whereas Rabbi Yehuda Matir, Rabbi Yehuda permits it, and he says the vow does not take effect because he doesn't have the chaf hadimu, and Rabbi Yehuda requires the chaf in there to say it's like it. And whereas the Tanakh Kavar Mishnah doesn't require the actual chaf. So the Gemara says. Ha karban, ka karban, karban, she'ochocha aser. If he says, the karban, like a karban, this karban that I will eat from you, it's prohibited. But, or, but if he says, le karban, will be for a karban, lo ochocha, therefore I will not eat from you, Rabbi Meir Oser. Under those circumstances, Rabbi Meir prohibits it. That's the Mishnah we just cited. Before. That's the source. This is the Mishnah we just cited a second ago. So the Gemara says, Katani, our Mishnah, it stated, karban, Ha karban ki karban she ochocha aser. Our Mishnah stated 
a carbon, the carbon, like a carbon that I'll eat from you is prohibited. Stama Tani Kurli Mayor. So that so at this point we're going to sue the anonymous Mishnahs like Rabbi Mayor, Duo Shani Bin Imra Imra, because Rabbi Mayor doesn't require the Khafa Dimyon. And he doesn't re, doesn't draw a distinction if you say Imra or for an Imra. E Rabbi Mayor, but if it's Rabbi Mayor, hard to carbon to Ocho Ha Asir, but why does but but why does if you want to say it's Rabbi Mayor, it says in the next clause in the Mishnah. Ha carbon, this will be for carbon that which I eat for you is prohibited. But Tanya, Modem Chachamim or Rabbi Yehuda, but Omer, but how could that be? Because we have another source that states that the Chachamim, who here we say must be Rabbi Meir, I agree with Rabbi Yehuda, but Omer, Ha carbon, Ha Ola, Vahamin Chavah Chata, Shelfu Chashim Mutter. We have a different source that, that the Chachamim agree with Rabbi Yehuda if you say Ha carbon, Ha Ola, Amin Chachata, that it's permitted. Shalom, Nadar Ze, Ela Bachaye, carbon. Because under those circumstances, he doesn't intend to prohibit his things. What it, all is he's doing is he's taking a vow about the life of the animal. He's not he's not making an implication to say uh, he's not making an implication to say that the vow is taking effect. The Mefarish says Shalom Nader Zel B'Chayav Karban the Chiyamar Ha Karban Shocha Mash Mekman Damar Chay Karban Shochocha. He says by the life of the carbon. I'm eating from you. He, he, he didn't say it's, it means nothing. It's it's nonsense. So therefore, so therefore, we see from here that the words of the Mishnah are contradicting the words of the and the Brisa because the, from the Mishnah it seems where he says ha carbon ha is aser, where in the Brisa it says the Chum say ha carbon ha is mutter because he's taking a vow by the life of the carbon. So how do we explain this contradiction? We're on the top of your gimel on the base. So the Gemara says, Lokasha, ha-damar, ha-karban, va-adamar, ha-karban. One is where he breaks it up into two words. One is where he breaks it, where he says it in one words. So Ron says that where he says, ha-karban, in one word, it's la have a carbon kamar. He's saying it should be a carbon, and therefore it's prohibited. Ha-karban means this should be a carbon, and therefore it's prohibited. So therefore our Mishnah says that kick carbon shochocha. That's what in mayor. He says there's no distinction between ha carbon and kar carbon. Where the surprise says ha carbon, that implies by the life of the animal. So that, that's nonsense. And so therefore the vow doesn't take effect. My time a chai carbon kamar. So what's the reason that if you say ha carbon, the vow does not take effect? Because it's as though he says. Chaye carbon kamar. He's taking a vow by the life of a carbon, which doesn't mean anything, and therefore the vow is not going to be applicable. So the Gemara says, Katani, my time a chaye carbon kamar. So, but, but the Gemara says, well, we have another question. Katani, but we say in our Mishnah, Katani, la carbon, la ochalcha. That if he says, la carbon, la carbon, I shall not eat from you. Rabbi Meir says it's prohibited. Meaning to say, if that which I, that which is for you is a, that this meaning to say, the Gemara understands that what he's saying is low carbon. It will not be a carbon. That which I do not eat from you will not be a carbon. The implication is that which I do eat from you is a carbon. And that's why Rabbi Meir is prohibiting it. But why? But Rabbi Meir doesn't say, that from this is the third time we've had this. That Rameir doesn't say from the negative we could prove the positive. From the fact that you will not eat from that which is not a carbon, that from the fact that we say it is not a carbon, that which I do not eat from you is not a carbon. Doesn't we can't necessarily learn that that which I will eat from you is a carbon. So I'm Rabbi Abba Nasikoma. No, la carbon does that does not mean it's not a carbon. But what it means is with carbon ye hey this. This will be for a carbon, and therefore, therefore, I'll not eat from it. Okay, now we come to the last Mishnah of the first chapter of Masechah Sedarim, a very difficult chapter. We, we thank Hashem for giving us the strength to get to this point. Haomer Chaver, if a person says to his friend, Konim, Konim is an expression of a vow, Konim P Medaber Imcha, my mouth is a, basically like a carbon, my mouth that speaks with you is a carbon, means say, it's taking an oath that I'm not going to speak with you. Yadai osa imach. 
that my hands will not do any imchay. My hands will not do any work with you. My legs will not walk for you. Also, in all these cases, we say the vow takes effect. The, the way, this is the way the Mefarish explains it. That which I speak with you is aser, prohibited upon me like the carbon. That which my hands do for you, or that which my hands walk for you, is prohibited upon me like a carbon. So the Gemara says, Veraminu, but why did this why does this state vow take effect? And we have a contradictory source which says, Homer Bishfuas Mimunidaram, that oaths have so, have a certain stringency. We're going to get to this, God willing, in a couple of days, that uh, in, in two days. That we say that oaths have in certain respects a stringency over vows, and vows over oaths. Homer ben Adarim, what's a stringency of vows over oaths? Shen Adarim chalon ala mitzvah, that the vows take, a, uh, take effect against a mitzvah. It means that you can vow again not to do a mitzvah, kibber shus. Just like you can vow about a discretionary thing, you can also vow about something that you're required to do. Whereas, Masha and Kim it does not take a put effect by oaths. You can't vow, you can't vow against a mitzvah that you're required to do. Whereas the Homer Bishwas and the vows have more stringency, a vow could an oath could take effect on something that whether or not it's tangible. Masha and Kim Benadurim, this is not the case with respect to a vow. A vow can only take effect on something tangible. So so, so if that's the case, why is the vow taking effect here? Why is the vow taking effect here? If you're saying I vow that I'm not going to speak, and 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 so therefore, and so therefore, it's not something tangible. So I'm Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says, now what, how do you word your vow? But Omar ye aser pi diburi. You're saying may my mouth be prohibited to speak. May my hands be prohibited for their actions. and my legs for their walking. And that's all you're saying. You're not prohibiting speaking, you're prohibiting your mouth, you're prohibiting your hands, you're prohibiting your walking. And they could not mean, we can indeed infer this to Katani, it says, my mouth that speaks with you. And it doesn't say that I speak with you. So therefore the vow is on the mouth, not on the speaking, and therefore the vow will take effect. We, we shall return to you to this beautiful chapter called Kol Kinuye. And now we're up to the next mission, the next chapter, the second chapter. Up until now, the first chapter was dealing with those scenarios where a vow does take effect. Now our mission is going to bring those scenarios where a vow does not take effect. So just to remind ourselves, we say that a vow could take effect in one of two ways, either by saying, behold, I take a vow upon myself, or by doing a hatfasa by associating it with another aspect, which was, which a vow would take effect upon us. So now the mission is going to tell us that actually, even if you do a fasa association, the vow will only take effect if it's on something that we had at the beginning of our daft today on a davra nador, on something that you could take a vow upon, but not a davra asr, not something that's inherently prohibited. If you try to do a fasa with something that's inherently prohibited, the vow will not take effect. As it states now in the mission of the Elu Mutarin. So these are those things that are not considered a nether, and therefore, if you take a vow about them, the vow will not take effect. For example, if you say, Chulin Sha'ocha, your food, that which I eat from you is like Chulin, well, but you're basically saying that which I eat from you is permitted, and so therefore, it's obviously not a problem. Well, let's say that which I eat from you is kibbas or chazir, is like pork. Well, that or, the vow will not take effect because the pork is inherently prohibited. Gavodos kochavim, that which I eat from you is like an idolatry, or kaoros avuvin, these are like the skins of the heart that are offered on the altar for idolatry, or trefos utrefos, or your kinevelos utrefos, like these non kosher animals, or keshkatsim or amasim, like reptiles, kechalos aron, or kachimasa, or if it's like the chal of Aaron. Whereas truma, these are things that are inherently prohibited. And so therefore we're going to say that, that we're going to say that the vows don't take effect in its mutter. The chalas aron and the trumaso is, is more subtle because there the run has to point out, even though you're the one who designates it as chala or truma, it's still not considered a davra nadar, it's still considered a davra asr. And 
and even though it's per, permitted to the to a regular Jew and pro, I mean permitted to a Kohen and prohibited to a regular Jew, nevertheless, uh, we're going to say it's considered to be a davar asa. So, because the prohibition comes from the Torah, not from your from your speech. Let's say a person says to his wife, behold, you are to me like my mother. And just like my mother is prohibited, therefore you are prohibited to me. We're go- so therefore, I, on the one hand, that will be something that's a Dabar Aser, and it will be prohibited, and the vow will not take effect. But we're going to say, we require him to, to get the vow annulled from a makum acher, from another place. Meaning you can't use the mother's honor as a, a way to annul the vow, but, but rather we require him to find a different reason. We don't want him to become a use to, an, we don't want this amar, the ignorant person to become used to having his vows annulled so flippantly, and so therefore we require the vow to be annulled for for another reason. So, so, so that's the that's the Mishnah. Uh, the Ron explains ain't po lo imo. We don't use as an excuse to annul the vow the honor of his mother. Meaning, to say if you had known that it would not be honor for your mother, would then would you have made a vow? We don't use that. Uh, we don't we don't use that. Um, Okay, we'll stop here. Uh, And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to address them.